Hi, this is Leo Ryan uh, for Ogilvy Do, talking to Karina Nami. Uh, Karina, you've just come off stage from uh, a panel at the Vanity Fair Intelligence Squared Digital Summit, where the topic was uh, around the UK and how we have squandered our heritage, from Charles Babbage to, well, where are we now? What, what did you think, what, what has happened and, and what, what's, the, what's the sign of that? So I think one really interesting statistic to start with is the fact that of all patents filed globally last year, the UK only counted for 0.2% of those. And I think considering, like you said, our heritage and our history is a real um, science and technology leader, um, and the brilliant universities that we have here and the talent in those universities, I think it's a real shame that we're not um, taking those ideas from academia into the real world, patenting them, commercializing them, bringing them into fruition so that they impact people's lives. So you think the ideas are there, we're just not commercializing them? The ideas are there, the talent is there, we lack um, the proper capital here, we lack the experience um, as entrepreneurs, and our universities are not terribly commercial in how they deal with spin-outs and, and entrepreneurs. It's a globalised world. I search on Google, I'm an Australian living in London, I work for an American company listed on the English Stock Exchange. Does it matter? Um, well, it does matter, clearly, because if you compare, so the US had um, $40 billion invested in startups last year, and Europe as a whole only had $8 billion invested in startups. So until um, we get the same kind of firepower as companies here to take on new markets and to grow, we're not going to be able to compete. So if we have squandered our inheritance of the, uh, the Age of Enlightenment, um, in terms of uh, science, what about this new age of enlightenment that you're talking about with uh, health science? So one of the themes that I noticed, so I'm the founder of a health tech company, and from where I stand, I can see several trends in terms of the technologies that are coming together. So the fact that we can now read our genomes for very, very cheaply, so people are aware of Moore's law, but the cost of DNA sequencing has come down many times faster than Moore's law. Um, so suddenly you can quickly connect, uh, collect genetic data about people um, across populations. So secondly, the fact that um, wearable sensors are becoming very cheap. So we've started with silly things like steps and heartbeats, but soon you'll be able to track much more interesting things like hormones and gene expression. Um, and thirdly, the fact that we have the machine learning, big data kind of analytical power to bring all of these massive data sets together and start to get real health insights out of that information. And I think um, we're on a real turning point in healthcare where those trends are pushing us into hopefully a much better, more effective healthcare system. Now we uh, are here in the UK where insurance is not quite as dominant a part of the health conversation as it is in North America. That could also be heralding the end of any kind of discretionary behaviour, uh, the thought that every time I had a drink, had a cigarette, did an illegal substance, it was all tracked in my body, uh, tracked in the system. Are we looking at the last, are we the last people who will actually have independent action in terms of our, our behaviour and our habits? Well, I think technology has its own internal logic, it, it progresses, but it's up to us as people, as a society, as culture, to draw the lines and the limits and determine how we want it to be used. And I personally believe that the insurance market needs to be regulated so that you know, people aren't being commoditized entirely in that way, but um, that people are provided with a level of healthcare and a level of insurance in a way that we as a society deem fair and reasonable. Uh, your business came out of your experience at the Singularity University. Could you talk a little bit about that? There's a lot of sort of hype and talk about the Singularity University. Can you dispel some myths and explain <laughs> the, the, how it got you to the, where you are in this yes. business? So the thing they do at, at SU is bring together a really diverse group of experts. And I think that's the real value of it. So it's this very interdisciplinary culture. And they carefully curate a group of 80 people from around the world who are scientists, entrepreneurs, designers, artists, um, experienced business people. And it's that cross-pollination between the technical, the more creative, the more commercial, 
that allows a lot of interesting companies to come out of, of that community. And final question. Um, you have been uh, incubated to a degree by Johnson & Johnson, a very large company, and you are a company of how many people? Five. Five, so a very small company. Yes. Uh, it would be made there is a very large company. We often partner with small companies. As a small company, yes. what's your advice to us? What are watch outs and how can we behave in a more civil, useful civil way. way? So I wouldn't, we haven't necessarily been incubated by J&J, &J, but we have a sort of collaboration with, their, mm. with them. So they've got this new open campus initiative where they understand that a lot of innovation, a lot of fresh ideas come out of small, um, nimble little teams that are outside of their big organization. And so they want to encourage us um, to grow within their ecosystems so that they can kind of make use of that energy. Um, so we have a pretty cool setup with them. They've taken no equity, they have no hold on RIP. We have a very clear legal agreement where everyone knows where they stand. And I think that's very important so that the small company can feel safe. And um, we use their labs, we use their facilities, we interview um, their scientists for our market research. Um, but what we do is completely separate from their work and um, they have no kind of call option to buy us out or anything like that. So, so that, what do they get out of it then? Sounds good for you. Yeah, I, it's a very good deal. I suppose they get um, some very cool science and some very cool um, people working on interesting things and interacting on a daily basis with their community. Um, and I don't know, the guys at the Innovation Centre find it very interesting and motivating and uh, yep. I guess it's fresh blood. So it's more soft metrics than hard metrics. Exactly, soft metrics. Very good. Thank you very much. Cool, you're welcome.